and welcome to Tiny Table Talk for The Challenge, Season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies, Episode 2. And in this video, we're going to be looking into the Veterans Alliance. Is it a long-term solution? I'll be ranking my top three Ashley Mitchell meltdowns, and I made a special montage that I was inspired by from this episode, as well as getting to some of the comments from my Thursday's review and recap. But before we get into all of that, Let's hear about today's sponsor. Do you have muscles? If you do, you probably had a muscle or two sore. I know I have. I normally get it from working out one or sitting at my computer for far too long. That's when I like to reach to the Charles Warren All Natural Sweet Ginger Vapor Rub. It is made with six all natural oils and butters. And did I mention that the packaging is biodegradable? Another product I love to use is the Coconut Milk and Oats Body and Foot Powder. It's talc free, baking soda free, and cornstarch free, all while keeping my feet sweat free, and it smells like fresh coconut cake. And right now, if you go to charleswarrenpresents.com and use my promo code at checkout, you can get a discount. All the information and a link is down in the description below. Thank you so much to Charles Warren Presents for sponsoring this video. And now on to Tiny Table Talk. As we saw in this week's episode, we saw the All Vets Alliance get solidified as we move forward into the game. The first episode was kind of an easy vote as Michaela kind of made a big target of her and Renan with her list and Emmy kind of kicked up the dust in the deliberation yet she was able to skirt by the elimination but two other rookies in Coriel and Michelle were sent into the elimination. So it was kind of an easy week without having to like fully put together an All Vets Alliance, but this week we saw something different. We saw the seeds be planted. We saw that the plans were put into motion before we even got to the mission for this episode where Josh was talking about wanting to throw Kells in. They spread the news around the vets and the vets got it done. Now, this isn't anything new if you are a longtime fan of the challenge. The vets for years and seasons have always said, put the rookies in first or the young players in first because hey you gotta earn your stripes but is this a smart move because the veteran alliance would be top notch if there was a real threat for the rookies to actually band together let's take a look at the votes from this past week's episode and they're just like all over the board they're not actually looking to work together. So I think that this veteran alliance is more about survival than winning. This is in fact a short term solution as eventually the baggage of the vets will implode this all vets alliance. We saw this happening in the first episode with Fessy and Nelson. We also saw in this episode, Ashley and Nelson kind of get at odds because Nelson was getting close with Berna in this episode. And on top of that, after Fessy won into the agency, he was thinking about wanting to throw in Amber because he has some vendetta against her. I think this is just bubble wrap for a lot of the veterans that need protection instead of being looked at and thrown into an elimination earlier rather than later. I think this very much benefits like Josh and Nani who needs that protection that doesn't want to be thrown into an elimination anytime soon or at, if at all. And also this helps out champs like Amber, like Ashley, especially CT who we saw win last season. Season. This is astounding that he is so under the radar and I know taking out Kells this early breathes a sigh of relief for a lot of the men in the season, especially I think CT, which I think this was a such a blown opportunity. Yes, you take out such a strong physical threat in Kells, but you also lose out on a possible threat to take out another strong competitor. I think the person that will go far in this season is the person that can collect as many rookies as possible as a backup team for when the veterans do actually implode. If you can gather as many numbers as you can, keep them safe for as long as you can, because when the veterans implode, you have a backup plan, you have team B. You may have the A team, but now you can have the B team as well. And the real strategy is gonna be happening in the back end, where it's not gonna be big moves. It's not gonna be lying about somebody making deals with a lot of people. It's the person that's actually making all the deals with somebody from behind the scenes where it's not being talked about. 
So that's what I'm looking forward to as I feel like we're going to get a few more weeks of seeing rookies against rookies and then we could possibly see the veterans starting to split into factions that's going to be where the real explosions fireworks are going to happen i already think that this season is really really good but once we hit that next level of veterans going after veterans and we see pockets of alliances working with each other with rookies and veterans together I think that's what's going to make this season sing. But now I want to turn it over to you. What do you think about the Veterans Alliance? How long can it last? And if they do implode on each other, who do you think is going to make the first move and on whom? Let me know that in the comment section below. But now... And now on to my top three Ashley Mitchell meltdowns. And at number three, we go to season 29, Invasion of the Champions, where after the Curry Up Challenge in episode eight, we have Bananas taking the toilet seat off the women's bathroom and setting it out to sail on a floaty in the middle of the lake. Ashley, who is still dealing with all the effects of the curry, is frustrated. She is ready to burn the house down. She yells at everybody, she packs up her bags, and she is getting on production saying she wants a ticket home now. I've been sick, and you let them take the only thing that I had to make me feel better? Luckily, Amanda was able to talk her down and actually stayed in the season and actually won that season. Now, for Meltdown number two, let's go to the challenge spinoff of Champs vs. Stars 2018, where in episode four, we have Luis as the MVP and the holder of the power to make a trade. She can trade one person from her team to get a person from the other team. And she decides she's going to trade Tori for Ashley. Don't touch me. This was a huge blindside and Ashley does not take this well. She actually leaves the hotel, has to walk around, but by the time she comes back, she's actually more pissed off than she was originally. Oh, you bitch. Ah, no. You want me to go out next? No! Not your back ever off! And coming in at number one, we go to her rookie season, season 28, Rivals 3. Ashley is drunk, her paranoia has bubbled up to the surface, and then she thinks Jamie, who she was seeing and hooking up in the house, made out with Nicole, Nani's cousin. She is crying, she is mad, she is infuriated. She's going through all these emotions at once. She goes to the women's restroom saying she is done with Jamie. Corey comes in to console her. And what makes this meltdown my favorite is the timing of Nicole coming to use the bathroom. No, I don't. It's a great A meltdown in my opinion, but what about you? What do you think Ashley's best meltdown is? Let me know that in the comment section below. Are you gonna live your best life? Now let's read some comments from my Thursday's review and recap. And the first comment comes from David who says, missed opportunity to not use Devin in a speedo for the previously on the challenge thing. Was disappointing seeing TJ do it. Hope that's only a one time thing. I completely agree. I think that was definitely a missed opportunity. I think that was the most visually striking thing from episode one and yeah i think they should have used it the next comment comes from emily who says this party scene was such a vibe i loved it i completely agree there was like two parties in this one episode and that's why i made the dance montage because i just loved the vibe so much and everybody was so excited everybody was having a good time i just loved it laughing lauren says i'm not surprised about the decision made by fessy and josh they think short term not long term exactly they should have kept kells since none of the men 
men have enough cojones to deal with CT. I truly enjoy Ed and Esther. Emmy is annoying. Nestle Crunch Nelson is messy. I'll be the first one to say that I was very excited to see Nelson back on the season, to see him all over the trailers because I was like, are we going to get more Nelson? And I thought he was going to come in super focused to win. He is just messy. And I feel like this could just veer him off course on keeping focused in the game and doing well. I hope I'm wrong about that and I hope he can go far into the season, but I just don't like how his game is starting. The next comment comes from Naturally Done who says, how many episodes do you think we will watch before the rookies start voting together? I loved how Kel stood up to Josh. I'm sure he will be back and I'm sure he will up his gameplay next time. I think that this episode may have started the catalyst to get some of the rookies thinking about what's going on. Why was Kells thrown under the bus? We saw Priscilla, we saw Tatcha talking with Kells after the whole deliberation and I think a lot of people are seeing that and it's not sitting well with them. I don't think it'll be an instantaneous thing where they just all band together right away after this vote and this elimination, but I think we will see them start like maybe forming together, maybe having more of those serious conversations that really starts bringing the bond of the rookies together. We have a question from Docs Pops Reviews. It says, Angel Cake, do you think if Kells would have responded to Josh during the deliberation that all the rookies should vote for Josh, that would have swayed the votes. I think he should have at least tried to say something. Devin gave him the floor. I think that we saw a lot of Kel's personality and gameplay in this episode. He doesn't make deals that aren't genuine. He doesn't want to be a part of anything that isn't genuine and that he doesn't vibe with. And he's not going to just throw somebody under the bus just because. Now, we've seen in the challenge all of that works. Lying, making deals that you know you can't cash in later, or just throwing out names and trying to dogpile and throw people under the bus, that works in the challenge. But it doesn't work for Kells as a person or as a player. So I understand the strategy of why not throw Josh's name out there. And you can throw him under the bus under the reason that, hey, he's spreading lies about me. He's throwing me under the bus to get me thrown into the elimination. Who's to say he's not going to do that to you the next deliberation or that's not going to happen to you the next time. I will be trustworthy. This man clearly cannot. So let's throw our votes on him. But I think Kells looks at his own character and his own personality more than the game. So I don't think he would do something that he feels uncomfortable with, and that is just throwing somebody else out there. Also, I think that everybody was pretty much set when coming into the deliberation, kind of like Michaela's list last episode and now coming into here, and everybody was just so set on Kels. So I just don't think it would have done much, but I understand where you're coming from that, hey, maybe he should have tried. Next up, we have a comment from Gren Gabs who says, hope we see Kels again, same. I loved how he expressed his thoughts and emotions in the confessionals, and he seems like a really tough and genuine competitor who appreciates the game for what it is. Also, really like Ed's attitude towards getting thrown in and competing. These two don't seem to be afraid to compete and show what they can do. Absolutely agree. I loved Ed's personality. I was a little bit skeptical because I did watch The Circle season one and he really didn't impress me much. I mean, he wasn't on there for long and the way The Circle is set up, it's kind of like hard to like gauge everybody's personality, but I think he fits the challenge. He's excited, he is already meshing well with everyone and then he's telling Fessy and Esther, hey, you wanna throw me in, throw me in. I'm, he knows he's gonna go in sooner or later and why not go in now? and get your feet wet. And yeah, I love Kells. I loved his demeanor. I loved how he took this game. I think he could be a mainstay and I would love to see him come back for like five straight seasons because I think as he progresses in the game and as he is able to get his footing within this game, he is going to be lethal. The next comment comes from King Kong TV who says, I'm tired of people crying over snakes in the game. Like, come on, Emmy, you were on Survivor. You should know this type of gameplay already. I'll be honest. I'm not buying anything Emmy is selling us. I understand that she may be afraid of heights, but her calling herself the weakest person when coming back, I think that was all for show. I think she knows exactly what she's doing. She's trying to put herself out there as the quote unquote weakest member of the game, when in actuality, I think she showed how tough she is in that elimination and then coming into the elimination and crying about snakes. I don't buy it. I'm not picking up what she's putting down. I think it's all calculated. 
Cam comes in with a comment saying, I feel so bad for Kells. I think he'll do better in solo competition. Hope to see him again. Yes, please. Let's come in with a free agents too. Let's come in with a solo season with Kells coming in. And I think he's going to beast it out. Next up, we have a comment from Frank Wallino. Sorry if I butchered your name. They say, I don't know why, but I love Tracy. She seems so kind and genuine. Hope she comes back and proves how strong she is. Fun fact, Tracy and Devin were in fifth place in the first daily challenge. Also, Tracy didn't get enough screen time because of her English. She said that in an Instagram story two days ago. I think Tracy got overshadowed because she didn't get a lot of screen time, and it's upsetting that she didn't get it because of her English. I think that is totally unfair. I think she needs to be shown a lot more than the two times that we got from her. She is kind. She does seem genuine in the very small bit that we got to see from her. I did think that in the elimination though that she did feel a lot of pressure on her and she wasn't able to perform as well as she could have. But she does seem like a very genuine person and I hope the best for her. And if she comes back on the challenge, I would love to see what she could do in the future. The next comment comes from Caitlin who says, this season, I'm actually sad to see rookies go, 100%. Usually I don't care, but I'm really enjoying seeing them compete and getting to know them. I hope they bring a bunch of these rookies back, 1000%. These rookies, are awesome. They are very entertaining. They're bringing the drama, and I think that a lot of them could be mainstays. And let's see them throughout the seasons and years. Get those arcs. And that's what we come to see and expect from the challenge. So I would love to see a lot of these rookies back. And the last comment comes from DeAndre, who says, Devin is the ultimate number one draft pick. It's done. It's in the record books. You are the number one ultimate draft pick. You may have been joking about it in the first episode, but it has been solidified in this episode. Two times in two weeks, you have been stolen. I could just feel Devin's ego just growing on the screen. But that is it for this tiny table talk. What'd you think about this episode? Let me know that in the comment section below. Let me know anything and everything you thought about this week's episode down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge 37 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.